Vauxhall VXR8 GTSR 2017 review. There will only be 15 made, but is the GTSR the final hurrah for the infectious Vauxhall VXR8? We've had an exclusive drive. What is it? The VXR8 GTSR is the very limited edition model that marks the demise of the V8-powered Vauxhall. Probably forever. The VXR8 is really a rebadged Holden Commodore and, with Australian car manufacturing being wound down, the Commodore as we know it will soon be no more. If that wasn't enough to kill off the VXR8, the Luton Marks sale to PSA Group earlier this year would have done for the charismatic old brute anyway. Vauxhall has been importing Commodores and sticking Griffin badges on them for a decade now and, before that, it did much the same with the Mana Earl Coupe. So what we're saying farewell to here, with Vauxhall's most powerful car ever, no less, is 13 years of big power, V8 engine, rear-wheel drive thugs. A sad day, indeed. Just 15 GTSRs will be sold in the UK, so it will always be a proper unicorn car. That's just as well because the £74,500 asking price, for a rebadged Commodore, remember, puts the car firmly in a territory that's labeled punchy. A number of software and induction upgrades to the supercharged 6.2-liter V8 have lifted power by a very modest 11 bhp over the VXR8 GTS, taking total output to 587 bhp. Torque remains at 546 pounds foot the VXR8 is a sizable thing and weighs in at a rather chunky 1880 kilograms. Vauxhall quotes a 0 to 60 miles per hour time of 4.2 seconds and an electronically limited top speed of 155 miles per hour a limited slip differential, torque vectoring by braking and enormous 410 mm brake discs on the front axle are all there to rein in the monstrous power. It's a limited edition model, and that means limited chances to test it. We're the first publication to be given a run in the VXR8 GTSR. So what did we make of it? What's it like? It's completely unlike any other super saloon, for starters. The more mainstream alternatives from the big German car makers all seem to favor four-wheel drive, twin-turbocharged V8S and paddle shift gearboxes these days, but the GTSR adheres to a much simpler, more old-school formula. An automatic gearbox is available as an option, but this test car is fitted with a six-speed manual. The VXR8 is rear-wheel drive only, of course. The cabin is certainly not befitting of a near £75,000 car, because many of the materials are plasticky and the fake carbon fiber trim on the dashboard is not at all convincing. But in terms of the more important stuff, seating position, the seats themselves, cabin space, visibility and so on, there's very little to fault. The seats are big, plush comfy things that actually hold you in place very effectively. In many ways, the GTSR feels like a four-door GT car. Apart from the comfortable seats, the ride is quite accommodating, the drivetrain is effortless and the whole car feels very laid back, rather than being tightly wound or uptight. It would actually make an excellent long-distance machine. When you twist the small knob on the center console to select performance mode, Though, it becomes every bit the angry and exciting super saloon the aggressive exterior styling suggests it is. The exhaust valves blow open so vocally at 4,500 revolutions per minute that it sounds as though the entire exhaust system has fallen off and the V8 boom that follows immediately after echoes for mile upon mile across the countryside. The engine is a total monster, pulling through long gear ratios with an unrelenting force. That long gearing, incidentally, means the car actually finds very good traction, it isn't simply a rampant will spin machine by any means. Dynamically, the car is much more game along a twisting moorland road than anything this big and heavy has any right to be. There's plenty of grip and a decent front end, but you do have to be patient with it. The body rolls in corners and heaves up and down over crests and compressions in a lazy and languid way, so you have to allow it to settle after one big input before it can deal with another. Everything feels as though it's wrapped in a layer of rubber. There's a squishiness and a compliance to all the major controls and also in the way the suspension and steering operate. It means the GTSR isn't an ultra-agile, super-responsive saloon like a Mercedes-AMG E63, 
but you can hustle it along a tricky road nonetheless. If you can match your driving style to the sort of pace it likes to flow along at, the GTSR can be a huge amount of fun.